What's the haps? I'm Morocan. Welcome, welcome back to Valhalla. Let's head, uh, let's head straight back on in. It is now safe to keep playing. No dogs in sight. That sounds like a good excuse to put some music on the Juki box. Let's pick some things out. Neon glow lights, sure. Um. I don't know. Star pierces the dark. Renewed hope. Bit of disco, bit of Carl Trine Dream out of orbits. We won't get that far. Uh, underground club, I don't like. Assignments? Oh no, show time. Let's do it. Okay, then, back to work. Welcome to Valha. Oh, hey there, Alma. Um, who's. Oh, right, yep. Yeah. I remember her voice. I remember her voice. Which is the same voice I gave to Kim last time. Oh, we've got two people who have. I'd forgotten I had two people who are what I would affectionately call my Lord Gaga voice. Which is not going to mean a lot to a lot of people, but to my Patreon subscribers that will mean something. At any rate, Alma is here. She's kind of quiet today. Um, <sighs> She seems down. Maybe there's something I can give her to cheer her up. She might like classy drinks, but what she really likes... Oh, crap. Um... What does she really like? It's been that long since I've seen her, I'm not rightly sure. She likes a Brantini, actually. Is Brant Brantini is a classy drink, though, isn't it? It is a classy drink. Uh, let's give her a big old Brantini. I'm sure she likes those. That's a, that's a lot of sugar. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. A couple of Carmatrine. Aged and mixed. That is a big Brantini. Boom. I get nothing for that. What? Nothing. Hey. Hmm. And this is. And this. It's on me. Drink, so you at least change your expression. Why don't just say you're worried about me? You got the message anyway, didn't you? Hmm. Well, I, I suppose she didn't order anything, as so it would be unreasonable of me to just, uh, just assume she would pay for whatever I throw at her. Shame, because that was a $500 drink. Could have really used the tip from that. Oh well. Because I am not going to be able to pay my bills at the end of the day. I'm not. I'm not at all. I'm going to get evicted. Or at least not have electric. One of the two. So how is it? Brantini, so you do pay attention to what I ask for. Yes! She does like Brantinis. Good, I'm glad I was on the ball there. Do pay attention, that's excellent. You have quite the fixation with Brantinis. To be honest, they suit you. Hey, yeah, you want to hear a silly story? Always. Oh, crap! Has this put me onto, like, the Alma ending? Because I know her favorite drink now. <gasps> I also know there's a chief somewhere in the game that's like, serve a hacker a specific drink, and I bet that was just that bit. I bet that just happened. Oh, dang, we might get a secret character at the end of this section. Oh, that'd be really cool. When I when I turned 21, my dad and I went to a bar to celebrate, just him and I. He told me to dress well enough that he looked like my sugar daddy. It was a fun night. We pretended at times we were dating. I went to blow off some steam about my mom. And the highlight was him ordering a brantini for me. I've had plenty of drinks and gotten wasted many times since I was 15, but that drink was different. It wasn't about getting drunk, the drink itself was the pleasure. He too said they suited me somehow. Oh. Ever since that day, he's called me Brantini Girl from time to time. Your dad sounds like a cool, like a cool guy. You should meet him sometime. So, why are you deflating? Deflating? When I got sad and started sighing repeatedly, my grandpa would warn me that I would start deflating like an old tire if I kept it up. Oh. <laughs> so what is it? Was, was it the news about people dressing in bunny suits after the whole Alice Rabbit boom? No, that's old news. I mean, it is a problem, but such a thing would only annoy me. So, you know, how's your mood right now? I'm gonna ruin it by blowing off all my stored steam. So, see, Alma, I've been feeling like other shit the last couple of days. You can't make me feel worse. So go ahead, unwind all your worries on me. Don't say I didn't warn you. 
Okay. So, you remember my sister Diana? Ah, uh, the one that separated from her husband and forgot her kids while fucking her way around or something? Perfect summary. I'll use it next time. I didn't tell you the whole story, though. More specifically, that she threw her husband out after months of abuse. Oh. However, that woman is incapable of getting a job and maintaining herself. And I mean that. She never even thinks about selling some stuff or trying to earn her bread. She just expects a guy to do all that for her. And I have no idea why she turned out like that. Both my mom and dad were hard workers. And they even started a small shop to have something to do after retirement. Huh. So, what does this fully capable woman do a couple weeks later? Why, bring her abusive husband back, of course. What? Yeah, and the guy spent a couple of days with her before leaving again. Yeah, a nice couple of hot steamy nights and then left. I... Uh, well... Huh. You act my, uh, like my little brother and sister after hearing that. The story doesn't end there. Oh, no. So she's broke and can't even get enough for a bus. Even though she'd probably be glad to sell her ass just to get money. It was up to me to pick her up. The last couple of days she left her kids with my with parents. And being such sweet angels, they've made a mess out of the whole place. Bernardo and Eva are actually staying with me, with me a couple of days to give them some peace. It doesn't help that I never got along with Diana. So we're in the car and she asks how her kids are. Of course, after all the built-up tension, I just exploded. First I started ranting about how her kids are growing up seeing some messed up stuff. When I start scolding her about not taking responsibility, about not taking proper care of her children. I tell her that she's in no place to have all those escapades. And after all that, she just says, What the hell do you know? You don't have any kids. Yeah, you slutty skank. I don't have kids, but I'm not broke just because I refuse to take a job. I don't have kids, but I'm not living in the first first barely familiar house I find. I don't have kids, but I'm not letting the guy that hit me on a regular basis back into my bed. I don't have kids, but I pretty much raised Eve and Bernardo, and they turned out pretty damn well. I don't have any kids, but I'm not a cheap whore! Damn. Wow. Ah. Damn. I, I, I don't know what to say. There's nothing to say. I love my family and put them above all else. But I am seriously pushing the boundaries of what I can allow. Any way I could help? You just did. Yeah? I know who I'm dealing with. I don't want to let stuff like that get to me. I'm still angry as hell though. I couldn't just discuss this with any of my family members. I can't tell my mom. I can't tell my mom your daughter is a, daughter is a slut. I just I need to get all this off my chest, you know. Well, from what I see, there's still a lot more to get off your chest. It's swollen as fuck. No, all you, see, all you see here is filled with love and dreams. Is everyone in your family as busty as you? Is that Jill's weird-ass way of flirting with her when she's in, like, the worst possible mood? It's like, hey, you're really angry. Here, let me hit on you a little bit. Seems That should work, right? I say that, but it, it kind of... I think that probably is working. I've got some of that, some of the honey stuff stuck in my throat again. It's really, really irritating. Goddamn. Honey's a weird ass substance. I recently heard tell that apparently it never ever expires. I don't know if that's true. I feel like that's dubious, but. Ah. Uh. The worst offender is my dad, actually. Kidding, kidding. I guess the only one that didn't get the big boobs gene was Eva. She was just on getting surgery or genetic treatment, but I tell her she's fine the way she is. This could actually be more of a hassle than a blessing. And poor Bernardo. His breasts actually started growing when he was eight. I just hope I don't take it too much from my mother's side of the family. Wait, what? What, what, what was that about Bernardo? What? The future's pretty weird. Yeah. Uh, my father's sisters still were quite young, but when menopause hit, my mom lost her looks rather quickly. Any good genes you got from your family, Jill? Uh, I got enough skin and hair, I guess. There's a thing about a shrimp allergy, but so far I haven't had problems with that. Oh, I see. 
Hey, you know what worries me the most about the whole Dayana situation? How your nephews are turning out? If she leaves them with my mom, she'll turn out better than her, somehow. Actually, what worries me is, what if I end up like that too? How so? If I find a good man, I settle down. What if he turns out shitty? What if I have a sudden burst where I want to live my life and end up like that? What if I have kids and I end up neglecting them because of all that? If you ask me the fact that you're even worried about it is indication enough that you'll be fine. You think? I'm pretty sure. You said before that she pretty much married the guy after a couple months, right? Yeah. No offense, but those are the kind of people who wouldn't even think about all that. Besides, if any guy ends up marrying you, it's because he passed your irrational standards. Hey. Am I lying? No, but there are things best kept as an unspoken truth. Uh, I wonder if I'll ever find a good guy. You will. You'll know when the time comes. Or you could go with Jill. Like one of the endings allows, as far as I'm aware. I sure hope so. Well, now the time has come to get another drink. Why can I get you? Hmm. Maybe something with ice, but alcoholic, please. Alright. Cold and boozy. Um. Actually, doesn't actually classify them by icy, so. Uh. I don't know. She likes classy drinks. Let's have a look through these. It's a Brantini! Brantini doesn't actually count for that, does it? No. Uh, Mercury Blast is... 250, that's alright. Nano Man, ooh, 320. It's on the rocks and mixed, and it has booze on it, and it costs 320. That's kind of probably what I'm after. Cobalt Velvet, 280. Bubbly Classy, it's on the rocks. 280. So... Wait, hang on. Where did I get the Piano Man from before? Piano Man's not... Classy? Um... Yeah, Cobalt Velvet, I guess. Uh, 280 seems like a solid bet. It's got a good amount of booze in it. And 5 Caltrain. Is that right? No, it's not, because I put way too much Flanagide in. 5 Caltrain. I was like, that only adds up to 10, but I put 12 ingredients in. That was... That's where I'm going wrong! Mix it up. Okay, Cobalt Velvet. Yep, that's ice and booze. Here you go. Thanks, I need to cool down a bit. That's why I'm here. So, you said you you felt shitty the last couple of days. Why? I don't think too much about it. Oh, come on, you heard my problems. I want to help you too. Don't worry too much. I almost forgot to tell you something. What is it? My boss is throwing a mega Christmas party this Sunday. You want to come? Sure, something tells me this Mega Christmas is going to be a mess at my parents' home, so I'd rather avoid it. Are you guys getting, are you guys getting chicken? I can get one. Ah, uh, to be honest, I wouldn't know. You can bring it if you want. It won't go to waste. Oh yeah, we're on Friday the 23rd, aren't we? This is two days away. Okay. That's interesting. And yet, there's three parts to this game. We're still only on part two. At first I've been like, oh, maybe this game only runs up to Christmas. It's just the run up to Christmas, the game. But no. Unless part 3 is literally just day 24 and 25 or something, or just part 20, day 25, I don't know. Gotcha. Hmm, say Joe, what's your favorite part of the chicken? Favorite part? I guess I like legs the most. Really, I like breast better. That's what she said. In your endo. Uh, breast is a bit too simple, don't you think? Legs have better texture. Maybe, but simple is usually better. Breast is easier to enjoy than legs. And a lot less messy. <laughs> this whole conversation! <laughs> Phrasing! <laughs> You're silly girls. Boss? You're there talking about breasts and legs when everyone knows the best parts are their wings. Boss, what's that? Spicy chicken wings. Why do you get spicy chicken wings? I'm not spicy chicken. <laughs> Hard to argue with that. <laughs> you know, spicy chicken. A shop two blocks from here. Sorry, let me phrase that. Why are you carrying a bucket of spicy chicken wings? Why aren't you carrying a bucket of spicy chicken wings? Well, because... Eh? Not as much. Yo, Armitage. 
Armor. I know what I said. What well, chicken you are talking about be cooked already? Yeah, you might need to heat it up. Or it be cooked otherwise. Great, I expect you here Sunday at 8pm. Thanks. Anyway, I'll be back to my office. She left the bucket. Mind some? No mind if I do. Oh, mild spice. Nice. Weird, maybe she got a mixed up order and that's why she left them here. Is she usually on his stronger stuff? I found, I found buckets that make my throat itch just from being near them. Oh. Hmm. Zanger, what kind of guys do you like? That's a sudden question. I'm not too picky with guys, to be honest. I want them to be decent enough. I'm not jealous, not aggressive, responsible enough to keep a job. Well, that's no good. Do you like them buff? What about tall? Hmm. No tattoos or piercings, I guess. Never liked either. What about you? I like them well dressed. If they go out in iron shirts and well coordinated clothes, they're sure to catch my eye. Some muscle is always fine too, but sharply dressed males catch my attention faster. And yet you're still single. And that's how I like my men. My potential husband, on the other hand, is another matter, another matter completely. I see. So, can you get me a drink here? The spicy wings turned out to be spicy. <laughs> what do I get you? Anything, as long as it helps me with the spiciness in my mouth. Okay. Uh, I'd suggest a beer would probably work the, work pretty well, you know? That's usually something you have with spicy... That depends what sort of... Well, you probably wouldn't have a double IPA with spicy food. He says getting his beer nerd on. If it was a lager, yeah, maybe that would work. And that's it, an IPA can be alright. Yeah, no reason why that wouldn't work. Lager would be the traditional choice. Um... Let's see, let's see, let's see. Could just be something cold. I think a beer... Beer's probably where it's at, right? Let's make a beer. Or I could pick something ex expensive. Make a Zen Star, however much one of those costs. Is that right? Um, sure. Here you go. Oh, damn. Ooh, more spice, but I have other problems now. Alright, so, next question. What kind of girl do you like? Mm. Hmm? Y you first? Sorry, I don't swing that way. I've seen the Chiefs! I'm pretty sure you do. Sure, I have no qualms about saying a girl is cute or cool, but... Nope, I prefer men in my beds. Now you. Shit, just calm down. I, I, I guess I like girls with uh, light colored hair? Light colored hair? Yeah, you know, like redheads and such. <laughs> what about white? Like your boss? Ah, you were just setting me up for that comment, weren't you? Sorry, it's just that when she got here with a bucket of wings, your eyes pretty much started sparkling. Your whole behavior transformed. You became giddy and cheerful all of a sudden. Hey. Oh, I can't blame you. She's pretty nice. Oh, I just felt like teasing you. <sighs> so, light colored hair. What about blondes? Do you like me? Yeah, I guess. Let's say I'm into girls too and I start hitting on you. Would you go along with it? Nice body, pretty face, and a good apartment. I would never let you go. <laughs> okay, then, enough tangents. Why don't you tell me why you were feeling shitty these last days? What? Oh, oh, that. I told you not to think too much about it. But I told you I want to know. Come on, Jill. You've heard my problems so many times. So I want to help you. Come on, come here. Eh? I told you to sit here. Come on. Eh? What? 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 Whoa! We get to see Jill's face, like, at the bar. What? Whose eyes am I looking through now? Oh my god, this has gone weird and surreal and bizarre. It's always been kind of like a first-person-y kind of viewpoint. And now we're looking at ourselves somehow for some reason. That's kind of weird. That kind of throws a spanner in the works just like conceptually for the entire game. I'm so scared at a point you just like dealt with it. It's like, the house scene is different. 
There's a few sort of odd other scenes, but for the most part, the core of the gameplay is always this first-person viewpoint. So suddenly just having your own face pop up at the bar is kind of weird. Kind of messes with you a little bit. Uh, what are you... Alright then, now I'm the bartender and you're the client. Hardly. The bartending station only works with me. I see. Okay, then I move this here, click this, and... Break everything. Now it works for you, for me, and the dog in a Hawaiian shirt. Oh, she hacked it. Oh, that was hacking it. Okay. Right. Why with him too? He's a dog in a fucking Hawaiian shirt. Right. How do you even manage to... Oh, yeah, hacker. Right. Now we've changed roles. You've been feeling shitty. Mind telling me why? It's, it's a long story. I don't even know where to start. Start from the beginning. Okay, it's something that goes back to my college years. Whoa, that's taking it way back. Back in compulsory education, I never made too much of an effort, but I managed to get high grades. Even in PE, I managed to do well enough to always get perfect grades. And then, of course, when I got to college, shit started getting hard. I had this perfection streak that wouldn't let me fail anything. Burning my eyelashes studying, I eventually managed to keep up good grades. After about half of the career, I made met a student teacher. Her name was Lenore. She helped me a lot with my studies, she even got me into stuff that gave me more credits. I really liked her, and after some time I found out she liked me too. Uh -huh. Yep, there's honey in that. That's gonna be a problem for the next ten minutes. Yep, that's stuck in my throat. Why is honey so sticky? Oh my god! Why? I'm buying some different honey if I ever make this again. Oh my god. Jesus. That's deeply uncomfortable. I need to strain it through something way finer than this thing. That is not fine strained. Yes. Ah, we started going out and met all of her family even and... You want a drink? What? No drink. Around this time, there's usually a pause that makes you offer a drink to the clients. There was no such pause. Please, I want to test this whole bartending interface. Ah, a sugar rush, then. You can't mess that up. Right. Jill asked for a sugar rush. Now, how did this thing work again? We look up by name, and then I can see an S, so it's probably under S. Sugar rush is there. It's under S. Huh. This is quite straightforward. How does anybody mess this up? I think we can, do you think we can get Jill talking a little bit more if we give her a little bit more booze? It seems like I just tapped the interface here. It's, it's all a touchscreen interface, so yeah, there we go. Boom, okay. That seems like the machine will make a boozy drink, and we uh, mix it up, right? Oh, excellent. Yeah, this seems to be in fine working order. There you go. Thanks. How was it? Like I said, you can't mess up a sugar rush. Hmm. I have this gut feeling that with your body, you'd make a better bartender than me. You're selling yourself too short. You're cute, you know. People don't go to bars for cuteness, though. You've obviously never been to a cat bar, then. Besides, my boobs can be a hassle when trying to move around this kind of stuff. So keep telling the story. <sighs> well, as the career went on and on, it got harder and harder. The last year and a half became nothing but study session after study session. Investigations, my thesis. When the graduation ceremony came, I had to make a speech, and suddenly, while reading said speech, I almost had a panic attack. Fear of public speaking? I realize I lost about a year and a half of my life. I tried to remember if I did anything fun at all, but all I could remember was studying and investigating new topics. I didn't even enjoy doing all that, so I was just standing there, and the satisfaction of graduating was minimal. Or else I had only gone through the motions day after day, from high school to graduating. I, I felt like there were whole years of my life slipped through my fingers. I never stopped to think if I enjoyed what I was doing. In fact, I never stopped. By that point, I stopped, and realized I needed a breather or something. Did I even like that career? It was all terrifying as hell. I needed all my strength to not stop running like a panicked mess. Mm. <sighs> so a couple of months later, I got an offer to start working at this big research facility. Well, no, I was ecstatic. She was so proud of me back then. But I was just scared. That would be my job. I'd spend my life expanding on what I did during that year and a half. What if I had a sudden realization like the one I had at graduation, but when I turned 40? I didn't know what to do, but I sure as hell wasn't taking that offer. I told her no, and she freaked out. She confessed that she was jealous because she never got such a chance. Things evolved pretty quickly. 
She said one too many things, I said one too many things. In the end, I just stormed out of her house and I broke a vase in the process. After that, I never spoke to her again. Damn. I'm sorry. I, I'm i sorry. I, I I suddenly feel bad for pushing you to tell me all that. Why are you feeling shitty about all that after all this time, though? Unless you've been feeling shitty for years. I have, but it's not... It's not just because of that. Huh? The other day, Lenore's sister, Gabrielle, came to this bar. Apparently, Lenore died last week. Localized nanomachine rejection. A heart attack. Apparently, she had it for a long time, but never told anyone. And coincidentally, it got worse after I left. And I just can't stop thinking about it. I'm wondering if it's me being there would have made a difference. And if it's true she had that for a long time, why didn't she tell me she was sick when we were together? I don't know, I just feel... Like all kinds of failure. Jill. Let's make it worse, I also lashed out at Gabby. Yeah, she was blaming me for her sister's death and all, but. She's just a kid for fuck's sake. She lost the sister who pretty much raised her on her own. Stop it all if I suddenly can't remember what stopped me from apologizing. Pride? Fear? Stupid effort to leave the most awesome person I loved as a thing of the past? Who cares? I lost my chance to apologize to her forever. Truly forever. I'm such a piece of shit. A selfish piece of shit. I honestly don't know what to say. I, I didn't expect the story to be this. I... Yo, boob tender. Yes? Can you get me a big beer here? Coming right up. I... Guess beer is... Yeah. Well, we learned how to use the system, didn't we? So... I guess we can handle making a beer now. Or rather, we can handle making a beer now, can't we? There we go. That's a rather large beer. Big beer for Jill. Thanks. I need to remember to, I need to, remember to take care of the cans in my apartments. And you drink lots of beer. One of the perks of the BTC issued liver implants is that I can drink lots of beer without getting too wasted. Mm. Hey Jill, what kind of girl was Lenore? Mm, well, she was calm and smart. Back in college, I was too thick-headed to get riled up easily. Stressed was my default state. So just like you're behaving right now. Shut up, I was worse. Well, I can't picture that. Don't, it's embarrassing. Anyway, she was always there, finding a way to cool me down. She was also able to hold a conversation about pretty much any topic. One time I saw a girl from talking about video games, talking about sports. All that variety while still being a hardcore scientist. She always pushed me to social interactions. If she saw me by myself, she would drag it with her. Watching people is fine, but talking to them is better, she would say. No one would always present me to her many acquaintances as the girl I don't mind cuddling with for hours. Ah, oh, man, I'm gonna miss her. At the point, I, even think, I didn't even think about getting back into a relationship with her, but... She was such an awesome person, I just wanted to apologize. And now... <sighs> You know, in a cruel twist of irony, she's the one who made me pick up bartending. Oh? Back when I was thinking, what the hell do I do in my life? I remember a night we spent at a club. She started talking about how the drinks were synthesized, the chemistry involved, the reactions and all that. Everything sounded so fascinating. I remember saying that her talk made me want to start mixing drinks. She said, she said, if everything else fails, why not take up bartending? Huh, interesting. Are you okay? There's some value of okay, yeah. It's just I wanted to thank you, Alma. And thank me? I guess I just needed someone to tell all this to. And you were the one. You volunteered yourself. Insisted on listening to me. You stood there listening to the whole thing from beginning to end. I know I might not be the most expressive person, that I'm not one to spout love and fluffiness, but I really like you. Maybe I'm just a bartender and you're just a client. I really appreciate your friendship, at the very least your patronage. I really enjoy working for you. Jill, are you dying? Shut up! I'm trying to have a heart to heart here. Sorry, sorry, it's just it's weird for you to get so happy. Well, I just realized that the saddest thing is how I'll never be able to make amends. And it hurts like fucking hell, you know. I never, I mean never. <coughs> I think that's the honeycomb catching up with me. <laughs> I'm 
sorry for ruining this moment. Wow. Ooh. I never, and I never want to feel like that, that way ever again. I want someone to suddenly exit my life and have my last memory of them involve something nasty. I don't want the lingering grief of having burned a bridge on a whim. I want to avoid that at any costs. And if it means breaking in character every once in a while, so be it. Well, I'll let everyone know how I really feel about them. And if I ever fight with them, I'll swallow my pride, muster all the courage I can, and be the one to apologize. I hate feeling like this. I hate it. Hate it! <laughs> That's a nice resolution. Maybe I'll be a copycat and do the same. Alright, enough sappiness. Get back here. I'm on duty, you know. Fine. It's almost closing time anyways. It was fun while it lasted, though. Hey. Yeah? I mean, you know, thanks for everything today. Silly Jill, you listen to my problems and I listen to yours. That's what friends are for, right? Right. I'll be leaving now. Oh, before I forget. Did you ever talk all about all this with your parents? They know the basics, but I haven't told them about Lenore's death yet. Why don't you do that sometime? I don't know. I want to bother them with my problems. Don't be silly. They're your parents. They live to share your problems. You should try having a talk like this with them sometime. They'll appreciate it. Anyway, I'm out. See you on Sunday. Take care. I don't know. Sure. I don't know. I don't know. Girl, short is nice. I, I, I think that. I think that's still Irish. Um. Into channel my inner Sean Connery. There's only two words you need to know to do Sean Connery, and that's uh, delicious beer. Um, no, it's not, but we've been over that before. Ah, uh, 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 boss, did you hear all that? Not all of it, but a good chunk at the very least. The expression changed a lot already. It did? You look happier, that's always good. Anyway, let's call it a day. I expect an even brighter jail tomorrow. Right. Oh yeah, boss. Mother's chicken wings. Fucking idiots, the spicy chicken. Sorry, dear. Now we won't have enough spices for your order until tomorrow. They said. Is that how they treat their regulars? Uh, call a manager. What? I have nowhere near enough money. I'm nine hundred dollars short. Holy dang! Oh, what does this mean for me? Your account lacks sufficient funds to pay your electricity bill. Reconnection endeavors will start on January 15th! Oh god! <laughs> Jill's power got cut. This will kind of distract her at work. Yeah, have a nice day. Dang! Where are we charging our tablet from, by the way? Or is batteries in the future just good enough that... It can last two weeks, three weeks, without electricity and charging. Or do we just charge it up at work? I guess you'd charge it up at work, but... Wow. <laughs> um, oh, I can't even light up my Christmas tree! Boo! Boo! I suppose if I'm going to stay canon, at least I can avoid having to splice my bloody webcam into the TV screen every time now. Because her TV doesn't turn on! So that saves me some work, so I suppose it's... <laughs> Swing some roundabouts! So, no more webcam in the apartment. Because there's not enough electricity for a webcam in the apartment. Oh well. I suppose that's where we leave things today. Thank you very much for watching! I have been Maroka. Alright, we'll see you next time.